Let us pray. Lord Jesus, King of glory, on this day you ascended far above the heavens, and at God's right hand you rule the nations. Leave us not alone, we pray, but grant us the spirit of truth that at your command and by your power we may be your witnesses in all the world. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <laughs> Our first lesson for today comes from the book of Acts, chapter 7, beginning in verse 54. This is kind of a sad account of Stephen, the first martyr, being killed for his faith. And yet the reason we have that today is because of his confidence. Even though he is about to die, he stands firm in his faith and he continues to proclaim Jesus who he sees in heaven. And that is the same faith that you have in Jesus Christ. A faith that is unafraid of death, and you can go confidently into your world no matter what. We read this. When the members of the Sanhedrin heard this, they were furious and gnashed their teeth at him. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see heaven open, and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. This they covered their ears, and yelling at the top of their voices, they all rushed at him, dragged him out of the city, and began to stone him. Meanwhile, the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he fell on his knees and cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he fell asleep. This is the word of the Lord. We'll now continue by hearing some for us on eagles. For all. For that reason, we too cannot have confidence. 
If perfection could have been attained through the Levitical priesthood, and indeed the law given to the people established that priesthood, why was there still need for another priest to come, one in the order of Melchizedek, not in the order of Aaron? For when the priesthood is changed, the law must be changed also. He of whom these things are said belong to a different tribe, and no one from that tribe has ever served at the altar. For it is clear that our Lord descended from Judah, and in regard to that tribe Moses said nothing about priests. And what we have said is even more clear if another priest like Melchizedek appears, one who has become a priest not on the basis of a regulation as to his ancestry, but on the basis of the power of an indestructible life. For it is declared, you are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. The former regulation is set aside because it was weak and useless, for the law made nothing perfect. And a better hope is introduced by which we draw near to God. And it was not without an oath. Others became priests without an oath, but he became a priest with an oath when God said to him, The Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever. Because of this oath, Jesus has become the guarantor of a better covenant. Now there have been many of these, those priests since death prevented them from continu continuing in office. But because Jesus lives forever, he has a permanent priesthood. Therefore, he is able to save completely those who come to God through him, because he always lives to intercede for them. Such a high priest truly meets our need, one who is holy, blameless, pure, set apart from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. Unlike the other high priests, he does not need to offer sacrifices day after day, first for his own sins, and then for the sins of the people. He sacrificed for their sins once for all when he offered himself. This is the word of the Lord. Our verse of the day for today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28. Alleluia, alleluia, Christ is risen, he is risen indeed, alleluia. Surely I will be with you always to the very end of the age, alleluia. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. We stand out of respect for the words and works of Jesus recorded for us today in the gospel of John, chapter 17, beginning in verse 11. Jesus here prays for his disciples that they will be protected in the world and sanctified by the truth. We read. Your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe by the name you gave me. None has been lost except the one doomed to destruction, so that scripture would be fulfilled. I am coming to you now, but I say these things while I am still in the world, so that they may have the full measure of my joy within them. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them. For they are not of the world, any more than I am of the world. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctify myself, that they too may be truly sanctified. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. We'll continue at this time with our hymn of the day, O Gracious Lord, with love drawn you.
grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Eventually, every parent has to cut the cord. They've got to let their kids go, let them flap their wings a little bit, and go out and live their own life. Now, for some parents, you're really excited for that moment. And you can't wait for them to get out of the house and find their job and get going and take responsibility and to become who they will be as adults. For others of us, we're terrified of that day and we never want to let go. We cling to them with everything we've got for a few reasons. The first reason, they're so cute still. <laughs> and we think about all the memories of them being this big and fitting in this part of your arm and you can't let that image go. And so even though they may be much bigger than that and you can't pick them up with two hands anymore, you still think of them as that little child that you remember coming into the world of the hospital. And so it can be really hard to let that memory go and to begin to see them more as the adult that they have become, started to become to be. Now there's another reason why you may be very reluctant to cut the cord as parents in general. And that is because the world is a pretty scary place. And you as parents, or you as adults who have nieces and nephews that are growing up and you're thinking about them getting ready to go out in the world, or you have relatives or friends who are getting older and they need to step out into a new uh, degree of adulthood, you grow apprehensive because of what you know is out there. You know, even as well prepared as they might be, the world may rip them apart. You felt that. It's not always fair out there. Just because you put the work in doesn't mean you're going to get the benefits out all the time. You're not always going to get what you think is coming to you. And prepared as you might, some things are just going to hit you so hard that you will be down face first on the ground. And you're apprehensive about your wonderful children and your loved ones and those you care about to go through that. So it's hard to let them go out and not be a helicopter parent or not be someone who's right there trying to control every eventuality because you want to keep them safe. In our Gospel text for today, Jesus kind of is a little bit of a clingy friend and sibling too. As he gets ready to suffer and die, as he gets ready to finish his ministry and ascend into heaven, he worries, and uh, worries is the wrong word, he, he is concerned about his disciples. Not in a sinful way, but he is concerned about them as they are going to have to go out into the world without him, right next to them all the time. And he wants to make sure that they are safe and secure for the days ahead. That they have everything going for them possible so that they may face the world and everything ahead of them with full confidence. And so what does Jesus do? For his disciples then and for you today who have an ascended Lord who rules all things from heaven. He prays. He prays for you. And in that prayer, he gives you great comfort for, yes, you parents, especially the parents of our confirmants today, as you think of them leaving grade school and going to high school. For you parents who maybe have younger children who have to watch them go and face things that you know will be scary for them, even at a younger age, especially in today's culture, as things are getting harder and harder for our young ones. For you who are letting your other young adults out and about, or even for you, who are terrified to leave these walls and go out for another week in this messy world to see what culture brings, Jesus prays for you. And he gives you a couple of beautiful reasons why you should be confident all the time. Reason number one. You are protected. Jesus started out by saying, I will remain in the world no longer. But they are still in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, 
Protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe by that name you gave me. None has been lost except the one doomed to destruction, so that scripture would be fulfilled. I am coming to you now, but I say these things while I am still in the world, so that they may have the full measure of my joy within them. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, for they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. Jesus leaving is a scary thing. If you got used to having Jesus right next to you face to face, you'd be super comfortable going places because you know he would give the right answer. Maybe you wish that he was sitting next to you during examination, guys, um, just this last hour, giving the answers for you so you didn't have to stand there and have me grill you. It was so comforting for the disciples to have Jesus right there. So for him to leave, just imagine how terrifying it was for them. For him to say, no, you are going to go into the world. I'm sending you out to them. But I'm going to heaven. <laughs> Good luck. Terrifying. And yet, Jesus here prays for them so that they would not be afraid. He says, Father, protect them by the name that you have given me and that I have given them. What is the name that Jesus has given you? Well, for you that are baptized, He gave it to you when you were baptized. So in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, you are baptized as a child of God. God made you a Christian through His name. The power that created the world also made you a child of God, even though you are afraid and incapable of being perfect, yet God gave you the name of Jesus Christ, the one who did suffer and die for the sins of the world, the one who took away your sins, the one who is our Savior. Yes, you have His name on you. And He says, Father, protect them by that name. Now, who is your Heavenly Father? It's the one who created the world. The one who did everything by the power of His Word. It's that Father who protects your children. Who will protect each one of these confirmands as they go into new and scary situations in high school. As they face situations and choices that we can't yet understand or know. But you know that the Heavenly Father who sent Jesus into the world to die for you goes with them to protect them and to even protect them from the evil one himself. You know, the same devil who has been whispering in the ears of people from the beginning, doubting God, questioning him, and wondering, is he really here? Jesus prays, please be with them, especially then. When they're alone and they feel afraid, feel they can't talk to their parents, or when we as adults are afraid and we don't know who we can talk to because our parents aren't around anymore, or our friends are far away and we feel terrified, Jesus says, Father, protect them. When they are afraid and they go through every single temptation, when they are falling into different crutches and addictions and peer pressure, Father, protect them. Because you can, even when we can. This is really comforting to me, and I hope to all of you, because there's that passage that sometimes is misused when we say that God will never give us more than we can bear. It's kind of half true. God says He won't give us more for, that we can bear with Him. Trust me, if we try to do things without our Father, or without using our faith to help carry us through this life, we will be crushed by sin, death, and the devil. And I'm holy three, remember? They will crush us and destroy our spirit and leave us for dead, not only in this life, but eternally. But God says that He can and will carry our burdens when we give them to Him. That when we are crushed by our sin, by our guilt, by our mistakes, when we do the wrong thing or, or we don't know what to do, God says, you call on me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you and you will honor me. 
That's what Jesus is praying for. Father, always be there for them. No matter how far they've run from you, no matter how many mistakes they have made, be there for them. And they need you. And you will. Because God always keeps His promises. We know as adults that that's, we need that just as much as our kids. If anything, we need it more because we have less support around us. As we grow up and we become the adults and everyone looks at us to have all the answers. And we're like, wait, when did that happen? And where are the answers that I'm supposed to have when I'm at this age? And we're still struggling to carry our burdens and our temptations. It is comforting to know that Jesus continues to pray for you in heaven before his Father. And keep saying, Father, I know they messed up again. I know they should know better at this point. But again, see me as perfect in their place. See my righteousness that I won for them on the cross. And listen to them. Forgive them. And hold them dear to your heart. It's true of you, confirmants. You know you've made mistakes before this day, too. And that's not going to stop any day soon. Same thing for you parents and grandparents here today. Proud of your children, but knowing that they're going to struggle just as you, that they are protected and cared for. Remember and cling to that truth. And then Jesus gives you another reason why you don't need to be afraid. And then you can have confidence to send them out into the world and for you to go out into the world. He says, number two, here's your reason for confidence that you know the truth. Jesus continued his prayer by saying, They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth, because your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctify myself, that they too may be truly sanctified. So what Jesus is saying is, they are not going to be like everyone else in this world as Christians. They will be picked on and hurt, just as you have been for being Christian. And that's become more and more true in our culture, right? We're becoming less and less of a Christian society. And it's very frustrating to see that. Some of the things we took for granted a generation ago aren't true anymore. And so we are feeling a bit more of that pressure that if you stand with God and His truth, you will be pressured and persecuted and hurt and penalized for your faith. There's no mistake of that. And we know that. And we're afraid to go out and see what that's going to look like tomorrow. How much more so for our children. We're going to go out into a world, into education, and into new challenges, and they will be bombarded with the opposite of what the Bible says. And they, as we will be called, naive, foolish, dumb, that we're not really thinking hard, we're just, we just have wishful thinking and clinging to the Bible, and those old ancient texts is not the way to go anymore. We've moved past that. What Jesus is saying is this, I pray to you, Father, that you remind my children of all ages, including you, as you leave these halls today, and you parents and grandparents, that you know the truth. Just because the world says you're dumb, or naive, or foolish, doesn't mean that you are. Remember what the Bible says, that if you don't know God, and you don't have faith in Him, you will think of it as foolishness. And you will hate those who have the truth because you can't begin to understand it without the Holy Spirit. So does it surprise us that the world thinks that we are dumb for believing in the Bible and some of the things that it says? It shouldn't be. It's the exact way God says it is. But don't let their push against the truth make you think that you don't hold the words of eternal life. See, what these compromises got to show us in their examination, and they've been learning for years, is the truth of God's Word and how it applies to every piece of our life to give us hope for this moment, for tomorrow, and for forever. What you know as Christians is the Savior who is the way, the truth, and the life will get you to heaven. You know what will happen after you die. You don't need to be afraid of that. You're not wondering, okay, what will happen? No, God has told you that when you die and you believe in the Lord, you will be with Him forever. End of story. If you trust in Jesus, that gives you an advantage. You know the truth. 
And the truth has set you free. That's why you're not afraid of death. That's why you don't have to be afraid, even if some of your own kids have to go through some really tough things, like Stephen, or you yourself will be persecuted in the future. You don't need to be afraid. Because you know who sits at the right hand of God. You know who makes you pure. You know who's going to let you into heaven. You're not still wondering if you'll be good enough. In Christ, you already are. Because you have His name on you. So it can be terrifying to go out in this world. And more and more each day. It can be terrifying to send our children into the world, thinking of all the things that we did when we were kids, and all the things that they will face that we can't protect them from. But be confident today, confirmants, parents, grandparents, and all of you who have loved ones, that you are protected by God the Father, and you are sanctified by the truth. You have the words of eternal life. And Jesus keeps on praying for you. So if you leave these walls today, confirmance. Go confidently. Hold on to the faith that you have. I believe in you. But more than that, God believes in you. You have the tools and the skills to go out into that world as you cling to the word of God. Parents, be at peace. God's watching out for them. He will take care of them. And he will go with them wherever they go. And all the rest of you who go out into the world and you're scared and frightened and don't know what to do some days and don't know what this world will look like tomorrow, go in the peace that only God can give because you know the truth. And the truth sets you free. Amen. Please rise. Now may the peace of God which transcends all understanding guard and keep your hearts in Christ Jesus. Amen. We join together in singing the You Are God, we praise you.
We present our offerings to the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask you to use these gifts that we present to you today as a show of our thanks for all that you have done for us to give us the truth and empower us by the knowledge that you are always there for us and to protect us. We ask that you use these, these offerings to continue to share that message with the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We'll continue with the prayer of the church. Please rise. Our Lord Jesus Christ, who has risen from the dead and ascended to the right hand of God, we thank and praise you for opening the kingdom of heaven to us undeserving sinners and for calling us into the kingdom by giving us faith to trust you as our Lord and Savior. Oh, what joy is ours as members of your kingdom. So ruled by your mercy and no longer filled with fear, we are confident of our salvation. No longer ruled by Satan and sin, we are empowered by your love to do the good works to which we have been created and now are called. Go with us, O ascended Savior. Hear our prayers and bestow upon us the help and relief that we need. Comfort us constantly with the forgiveness of sins and crown our lives with good. Aid us against every temptation and strengthen us in every trial until we receive the victor's wreath of everlasting life. In Jesus' name we pray. And today we present a special prayer for the grandfather of my wife, Stephanie, who is suffering from cancer that is advancing quite quickly, especially in his kidney. He will, God willing, have a surgery on Monday. That will be a bit intense, and we pray for your help, for the surgeons, that you guide their hands, that you keep him strong and, and optimistic about his chances, not only in that, but in life in general, and that you give him especially the hope of eternal life that you give through your word and your beautiful grace that you give us through your son. It is in his name that we pray. Amen. Let us join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Congregation, please be seated. Confirmants, please step forward. Ready for this? <laughs> they said yes. Brothers and sisters in Christ, our Lord Jesus Christ said to his disciples, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded them. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. In obedience to the Lord's command, you have been baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. You have been taught the precious truths of the Christian faith as confessed by the Evangelical Wells, Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran Church. You know what God has given you by His grace and what He expects of you as His dear child. And you now have the privilege of receiving the Lord's body and blood in the sacrament of Holy Communion. You are here to make a public profession of your Christian faith. 
The Apostle Paul, writing to the Romans, said, If you confess with, with your mouth Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from, dead, from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Therefore, lift up your hearts to the God of all grace and joyfully answer these questions. Do you this day, in the presence of God and of this congregation, acknowledge that in baptism God gave you forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation? If so, answer, I do. Do you reject the devil along with all his lies and empty promises? If so, answer, I do. Do you believe in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit? If so, answer, I do. Do you believe all the books of the Bible to be the inspired word of God? If so, answer, I do. Do you believe that the teachings of the Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran Church, as you have learned to know it from Luther's small catechism, is faithful and true to the word of God? If so, answer, I do. Do you intend to continue steadfast in this teaching and to endure all things, even death, rather than fall away from it? If so, answer, I do, and I ask God to help me. Do you intend faithfully to conform all your life to the teachings of God's Word, to be faithful in the use of the Word and sacrament, and in faith and action remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit as long as you live? If so, answer, I do, and I ask God to help me. Since it is God alone who enables us both to will and to do His good pleasure, it is right for us, dear friends in Christ, to call on Him for these confirmants that He would graciously complete the good work which He has begun in them. Let us therefore bow our heads and pray. Almighty God, in baptism you have made these brothers and sisters members of the body of your dear Son, Jesus Christ. You have washed them by his blood, buried them with him in his death, and given them a new life in his resurrection. Renew them by the Holy Spirit, which you have poured out on them generously through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Let them live out their lives as heirs of eternal life. Lead them to serve your church in holiness and righteousness all their days and keep them in fellowship with all who wait for the return of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, what we as a Christian congregation have here asked our Heavenly Father to confer on all of you, we now ask Him to give each of you individually. Molly, Ray, El Trider. Your verse is Matthew 11, 28. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. May the Lord bless and keep you, and take care of you all of your days, and watch over you. Colin, Michael, and Fane. Your verse is Hebrews 13, 5. Never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. May the Lord always be with you everywhere you go, and you never doubt that he is always there for you. Zachary Lee Holland, Psalm 56, 3. When I am afraid, I put my trust in you. May the Lord keep you from being afraid in the future, and may you know that he is always with you. You don't have to. Caitlin, Emma, Clap. Your verse is Philippians 4.13. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. The Lord always gives you strength, Caitlin. He will always be with you, standing behind you, so that even if you feel weak, he will guard and protect you. Mason William Maki. Revelation 2.10, be faithful even to the point of death, and I will give you the crown of life. The Lord has given you a greater crown than you can ever earn for yourself. Remember that, because it defines your identity. Stand firm in Him. Aaron Rose Messman, your verse is Joshua 1.9, be strong and courageous, do not be terrified, 
Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Remember that he will follow you, no matter where you run to, wherever you go, and you think he is far away, he is not. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God is always there with you. Caden, Pagan Cough, Exodus 15, 2. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will praise him, my Father's God, and I will exalt him. Caden, please sing, continue singing the praises of God through your words and actions, knowing that the Lord is with you, and he will exalt you, as he has done for your family before you. And Brett, James, Toma. Psalm 27, 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Be strong in the faith that you have, knowing that your God is your stronghold. You never need to be afraid. Your church now invites you to receive the sacrament of the Lord's body and blood. Accept this invitation with deep reverence and holy joy, regarding your communion at the Lord's table as a precious privilege given you by God through His church. Receive this sacrament thankfully and often. The Almighty and Most Merciful God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and keep you. Amen. Thank you very much. Maybe. We continue with the Lord's Supper. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took breath. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink of it in remembrance of me. Peace of the Lord be with you always.
Lord, I offer you for the forgiveness of all of your sins.
Please stand.
Thank you very much to all of you for being here today. What an awesome thing it is to have a packed house and have so many here to celebrate not only this confirmation, but the fact that we get to gather together around the Word and Sacrament together as a, as a fellowship of believers. So thank you for being with us today. I do have an announcement that I was supposed to make four weeks ago. <laughs> so we have the amazing uh, privilege of having Tom Strauss accept his call to be our 4K, 5K teacher next year. And I have his acceptance letter here to read to all of you that we may rejoice together that we have him serving us next year. Dear members of St. Peter's Helenville, thank you for extending the call to me to act as the 4K, 5K classroom teacher for the 2021-2022 school year at your school. This is the age level that I greatly enjoy working with. It has been an interesting and exciting challenge this school year as I've learned new curriculums to meet the needs of the students. I greatly appreciate the many positive comments and words of encouragement from parents and so many others I've had the opportunity to meet. After considering this call to serve, I'm writing to tell you that I will accept the call to teach the 4K, 5K students at St. Peter's School of Helenville. I pray that the Lord will help me to best meet the needs of his children as best I can. Respectfully, Tom Strauss. Yes, Mr. Just Michael. another ministry-related announcement. Uh, this past year, we had two student teachers uh, down at St. Peter's School, and uh, yesterday was graduation and call day. So they were uh, graduated, yay. And then uh, they also uh, received assignments uh, Sam Evans, Mr. Evans, uh, received a call to Petra Lutheran in Sauk Rapids, Minnesota, uh, teaching in the upper grades. And Justice Kupski, who was uh, earlier this year, um, is it going to St. John Lutheran in Saginaw, Michigan, also teaching upper grades. So again, thanks for supporting them while they were here, uh, and we keep our prayers with them as they go into public ministry. Thank you. Thank you. And then one other announcement we've been highlighting is that um, we will have a VBS in the middle of June. So if you have kids that would love to attend that, we'd love to have them be there. If you would like to help with that, there are sign-up sheets in the back of church for you to sign up if you want to help with food or volunteering for the event or in other ways. All those are spelled out for you on the sheets in the back. Any other announcements that anyone else has today? Thank you, and God bless you. Have a wonderful week in the Lord, and especially compliments. Thank you so much, and may God bless you today and into the future. Please stand and come with me.